Hey folks, welcome to the 8th day of 30 days of Laravel. Today we are going to talk about the rescue helper, which is kind of the broader of the retry helper. Um, do you know the situations in your application where you are executing something that might throw an exception, but um, you want to still execute the code, right? So. Let's say you have an action that might throw an exception, but you don't want to stop the execution. So uh, let's do, I don't know, let's do something like fails. And I'm going to create an anonymous function right here real quick, which is throws an exception. So in your code, if you have something that might fail, you usually do something like try, then you execute it. And then you catch the exception like this and then you don't do anything. So this block of code right here ensures you that your code will run. Now, this is not very readable and Laravel provides an awesome, um, an awesome helper to, to deal with it. So let's try running it. You can see that we get the okay and if I were to remove this and just execute the function, it fails, right? So another way that we could do this is use the rescue helper. So we could say rescue. And the first argument that we pass is a closure. So if we go here, you can see that it is a callback. So we could say function. And um, I'm just going to do the same thing that I'm doing right here. I'm just going to throw the exception right away. Let's try it. And you can see that we get a response. Now, if we were doing something that we had to start a value on a variable, so I don't know, like um, found user or something like this, and we wanted to return this, uh, obviously it is going to be null, right? But the rescue helper accepts a second parameter right here that allows us to give a fallback value. So we could say, okay, if we don't manage to find a user, just return a new instance of user, something like this. And you can see that now I am returning a, an instance of user. If I were to jump and die this, you can see that we are getting a fresh uh, user instance. We don't have any particular user right, now, right here, but um, it's a user instance. So we have this fallback uh, value right here. And um, if we want to go even further, um, we can actually pass in a, a closure here with the exception. So if I were to die, do this, we get the exception. And then you can do something with it or you can just, you know, I don't know, has some more complex logic thing here than a variable. But um, this third parameter is important because this means whether the exception is going to be sent to the exception handler or not. Sometimes you don't want it to be sent to the exception handler. If you don't know what I'm talking about, uh, take a look at that documentation, but it should probably be true. But this is an important parameter. So this is how we use the rescue helper. This, we use this when we have some code that might throw an exception, and we just want to let the code run. We don't want to stop it. Now, if you're not starting the result of uh, that code that might uh, throw an exception in a variable, you don't need to, to have any variable this. You can just run rescue and that's it. But if you are, you can pass any variable. So to sum it up, the rescue helper is going to execute the closure and it is going to return its value if it doesn't fail. If it fails, it is going to return null unless you explicitly set the second parameter and you won't stop the execution of your code. So this is the rescue helper. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson and see you in the next one.